What if companies could run themselves, making decisions, managing operations, and generating profit without any human in charge? That's the core idea behind anonymous companies. They aren't traditional businesses with CEOs or employees. They're self-operating, AI-driven organizations that can think, act, and evolve on their own. They use data, incentives, and automation to coordinate work across AI systems, building products, managing assets, and scaling globally 24-7. An anonymous company isn't managed, it's programmed. Its mission is defined by code, its incentives are encoded into smart contracts, and its workforce is made up of AI agents to learn, adapt, and compete in open markets. It's the next logical step after decentralized finance, decentralized compute, and open AI. There's only one place where something like this could naturally take root, the web. The web has always been humanity's largest open system. It's permissionless, interconnected, and programmable. It allows any participant, human or machine, to exchange data, ideas, and value without centralized control. It's where Bitcoin was born. It's where Ethereum grew, and now it's where anonymous companies are beginning to emerge. That's the visions behind the Infinite Web Arena, or IWA, the first synthetic benchmark for AI-driven companies. The IWA isn't a game or a simulation. It's a living environment where anonymous systems are tested, ranked, and rewarded based on their real-world performance. Each company, or AI entity, enters the arena with a clear goal. To outperform, to learn, and to scale, but here's where it makes it unique. Every round begins with a dynamic zero launch. That means if legacy advantage, no preceded data, no incumbency, every participant starts from scratch. Performance, no reputation, decides the outcome. At the end of each cycle, the system applies a winner-take-all instead of mechanism where the top performers earn rewards along with visibility on a live leaderboard that updates in real time. It's competition, but for machines, a constantly shifting mediocrity of intelligence. Now, powering that ecosystem is Utopia Studio and Utopia Marketplace. Together, they give builders and businesses direct access to what we call AI workers, specialized agents trained to handle specific roles inside an anonymous organization. Think of them like departments. Instead of people, the neural networks. One AI worker might handle market research and competitor analysis. Another could manage finances, analyze yield, and optimize capital allocation. Another could handle growth, content, or strategy. Each AI worker communicates with the other, exchanging data and optimizing for collective performance, forming an adaptive, self-improving network. It's like running an entire company where every department run at machine speed, continuously learning, improving, and competing for incentives. In this model, human creativity doesn't disappear. It becomes supervisory. Builders design the incentives, train the systems, and set the goals. The AI handles the execution anonymously, transparently, and with perfect audibility through an on-chain logic. And this is where the BitTensor connection becomes clear. Because the same economic principles that made Bitcoin valuable, scarcity, incentives, and distributed verification are being expanded into a broader intelligence economy based through TAP, BitTensor's native token. Bitcoin proved this incentives can align strangers to build a global financial network. BitCenter takes the same logic and applies it into intelligence itself, creating an open network where miners, validators, and AI models cooperate and compete to produce knowledge. That's why thinkers like Mark Jeffrey and Rob Greer are calling it the next great evolution in digital value. It's Bitcoin plus subnets, a system where thousands of AI networks plug in a decentralized economy. Each subnet specializes in domain, each contributing to a collective intelligence. In this conversation, Mark and Rob debate whether BitTensor could ever flip Bitcoin, whether the intelligence economy is powers could surpass the digital gold standard itself. Mark sees it as an Ethereum-like phenomenon, driven by utility rather than scarcity. Rob calls it Bitcoin plus subnets, a sum of all its parts, potentially worth multiples of gold if decentralized AI becomes the dominant force in the world. And that's where it all ties together. Because if Bitcoin digitalized money and Ethereum digitalized contracts, the BitTensor and anonymous companies can be digitalizing business itself. Every operation, every decision, every collaboration, managed by AI, driven by incentives, and verifiable on-chain. An economy where the cost of intelligence trends towards zero. Where everyone, anywhere, can launch an anonymous company in minutes, not months. Where AI workers compete in an infinite web arena, and the best systems naturally rise to the top. This is the new web, the infinite web, a frontier of open anonymous self-improving systems that learn, trade, and build. Not for humans, but alongside humans. The next generation of the internet won't just connect people, 
it will connect intelligence itself. To learn more about the Infinite Web Arena and see how you can build or deploy your first anonymous company, visit the link in the description. All right, let's get into it. Do you think it flips Bitcoin? That's a loaded question. Mark knows Bitcoin way better than yeah, I do. Yeah, I'm going to say no. He's written two books on it. <laughs> I, I mean, have I, some views I'm on it. I'm obviously a massive BitTensor bull, but I, I don't. And I've heard JJ and other people say, oh, yeah, we're going to eventually we flip Bitcoin. Maybe, but I, I personally don't see that. I think it's closer to something like Ethereum. I think the dynamic is very Ethereum-like in terms of its utility. Now, if, if what Rob just said earlier in this podcast you know, the, the rails upon which all of open, if everything becomes open AI, and I don't mean the company, I mean the phenomenon of truly open AI, right. and it does end up being built on BitTensor Rails, then yes, it will absolutely flip in Bitcoin because that'll be a much bigger world. I don't know if that'll happen. I think I think we're going to end up somewhere in the middle where there's a mix of the, of the centralized versus the decentralized, but, you know, it's not impossible. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think it's, it's within the realm of possibility. It's not zero, that's for sure. And I think Barry went on a podcast and said, like, you know, this could be as transformational as, as Bitcoin. Just a quick anecdote. I mean, there was Mark and I were at a dinner party and there was a bit of a BitTensor skeptic there. And he was saying, you know, what is what is BitTensor without its subnets? And we said Bitcoin, you know, and so <laughs> Bit, BitTensor is Bitcoin <laughs> plus plus subnets. And so, uh, you know, it's it's theoretically possible that it becomes a better store of value than Bitcoin. You know, some people might say that Bitcoin is digital gold and the TAM is you know, that of gold, you know, 18, 19 trillion dollars right now, current price levels and or maybe beyond. Um, and so, some might say that Di BitTensor is building an entire digital economy that could be worth many multiples of digital gold. Um, and I, I, I do share like Mark's view that if if the AI world converges on decentralized and BitTensor is, is that phenomenon, then I think it's it's absolutely possible that that it it would flip Bitcoin. But again, we're not underwriting to that, but it's possible. Okay. Hey, that's all I needed to hear. Mark's becoming a little more, more bullish. He says it's possible now. That's all I need to hear. <laughs> well, I mean, I've always said, I don't think I've ever said it was impossible, but I just, but I think I've been pretty consistent in my view on, on this podcast or other podcasts and hash rate. And maybe even here, I don't remember whether I said this here or not. And that I, I view it as very much like sort of an Ethereum like uh, phenomenon and, you know, translating that into numbers, that's like 500 billion, you know, let, let's say, let's say Bitcoin goes to 10 trillion, right? I think then BitTensor at, at 1 trillion is completely realistic. I don't think that's out of the question. Yeah. I mean, I, I could paint a picture around this. So quantum computing and breaking SHA-256 is accelerated because of AGI or super intelligence and Bitcoin isn't able to upgrade itself in time. But BitTensor is able to because it's still somewhat centralized. Or, you know, I agree with Mark, you know, it is a true, you know, it is an Ethereum dynamic, but I would, I would argue it's way better because uh, you could only buy the alpha token. You can only buy the subnet tokens by buying Tau first. And so BitTensor truly is a sum of the parts, whereas Ethereum is not. And so if you agree that, you know, the subnets and BitTensor are going to go to thousands, if not tens of thousands in the future, uh, BitTensor will be the, the sum of the parts of all of that innovation, all of that market cap that is being built. So who knows if it supplants Ethereum or Bitcoin, but this is going to play a major role within crypto, you know, top 10 for sure, in our view, I think.